What's up guys? It's Friday, so you know what time it is. It's time for What The Fitness. Let's get them. But first, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, follow the algorithm. All right, so today's clip comes from Impact Theory, which is a podcast hosted by Tom Bailu, I think is how you pronounce his last name, so I apologize if I get it wrong. I actually used to listen to that podcast and really enjoy it until he started hosting a lot of charlatans in the nutrition and fitness industry. I've tried reaching out multiple times. Hey, if you'd like a different perspective, I'd be happy to come on the show. I know everybody's gonna get on me like, oh, you're just clout chasing, blah, 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 blah. No, I like helping people and I wanna help people get good information. So I've tried reaching out because I don't wanna just criticize these shows without them having a chance to like hear a different perspective, but I'm not sure they're really interested in it. So anyways, this is titled Protein Shakes Are Killing Your Gains and it appears he is interviewing Ben Greenfield, who quite honestly has not appeared on What the Fitness as much as he probably should have. So we're gonna help rectify that today. I'm a huge fan of fasting after exercise. Not only do you get a, a growth hormone response oh God. and a testosterone response that's greater than if you finish your exercise session with the suck down, you know, your, your fructose, your maltodextrin, your creatine, you know, whatever else is in your shake. Uh, you instead fast for a couple hours after exercise. That also allows the body to have to fight its own battle. Right, it, it's, it's got to create a lot of its own endogenous antioxidants. It has to engage in that free radical cell to cell signaling. It has to create new mitochondria or increase the health of the current mitochondria. It has to, has to repair and recover. And as soon as you try to do everything you can, you know, all the biohacks and supplements you can so that you recover as fast Aren't you as Mr. Possible, Biohack? You actually quell a lot of that response. So it's, it's very interesting how there's, there's kind of like a, a sweet spot with a lot of these things, especially when you, when you combine hormesis and mitochondria and exercise and, and wanting to live a long time. Let's pick out a bunch of buzzwords, throw them in all together. Mitochondria, hormesis, quell. So let's take the claims systematically here. So first off, this idea that protein shakes are killing your gains. I don't think he really came out and said that. He's more saying if you fast after exercise, it's probably better for you. So let's examine that a little bit, shall we? So first off, in terms of gains, if only we had randomized control trials looking at protein supplementation and get, oh wait, we have dozens if not hundreds of randomized control trials looking at protein supplementation and showing that it enhances gains. But the growth hormone response lane, but the testosterone lane, I've covered this on this channel before, but short-term acute changes in growth hormone and testosterone from training mean absolutely nothing for hypertrophy. Well, growth hormone in particular means nothing for hypertrophy at all because the only thing growth hormone does in terms of growth is increase total body water and connective tissue. It is not anabolic to skeletal muscle in adults. This is very clear and I'll cite uh, an article I wrote that is filled with citations to show just that. I would put in the individual citations, but it's just easier for me to cite my own article. But that one does have clickable citations that you can go read for yourself if you are interested in seeing the specific studies I'm referring to. Growth hormone in adults, not anabolic. As far as short-term rises and falls in testosterone, this was debunked over 10 years ago, mostly by Stu Phillips' lab, demonstrating that acute changes in hormones do not drive hypertrophy. And they did a really elegant study to look at this. And they looked at a few different hormones. They looked at testosterone, growth hormone, IGF-1, in terms of the systematic levels of those hormones. And they looked at cortisol as well. They measured those hormones after training sessions. And then they also looked at long-term changes in lean mass and strength and cross-sectional area. Did you know that only one hormone was associated with actual muscle growth? Guess which one it was. Not testosterone, not growth hormone, not IGF-1. Cortisol. Cortisol was associated with increased lean mass, whereas the others were not. Now, how could that possibly be? Am I saying that cortisol is anabolic? No, what I'm saying is, Many of you and many of these social media experts do not understand the difference between an acute response versus chronic signaling. Chronic signaling is driven by your basal levels of each hormone, whereas acute responses are much more driven by fuel mobilization. This is why consuming food at 
any time tends to acutely drop testosterone. Do you think that you could fast your way to being more jacked? Because I can promise you it didn't work out very well for people in the Minnesota starvation experiment or Gandhi. So fasting is not a way to improve muscle mass. This is an example of somebody taking mechanisms, these acute rises in hormones, and basically saying, well, since growth hormone goes up and testosterone goes up when you're fasting at the end of a workout, that's gonna make you more anabolic. Those are surrogates. Yes, testosterone tends to be anabolic. Growth hormone is not anabolic, although people seem to think it is. Uh, it's not the skeletal muscle anyway. But those are only a small sliver of what actually contributes to the overall muscle growth response. So what do you care about? Do you care about your levels of testosterone after you train? Or do you care about growing muscle? Because I know the only reason I care about testosterone is as it relates to muscle. Now you could say, well, you know, matters for sex drive. Sure, okay, well, fine. But in the context of what he's talking about, what I care about for testosterone is as it relates to muscle mass. So why don't we just look at studies that measure muscle mass then, since we have them? This is what's really frustrating, is people like Ben will take these mechanisms and use them to confuse you because you have already equated things like testosterone and growth hormone in your mind with muscle growth. And so when he says this, oh, it makes sense. If I just fast after my workout, my body's fighting itself, It'd be more anabolic, I'll get more jacked. No, that's not what the studies show. So once again, acute changes in hormones don't make a difference for anabolism. What matters for anabolism is muscle growth is an intrinsic process when it comes to resistance training. Supplementing with protein or consuming sufficient protein and calories can help facilitate that process. Fasting after your workout is not going to make you more anabolic. And if anything, it will actually attenuate the growth response. So once again, when somebody is making a claim, claim here being protein shakes, or I mean, Ben didn't say protein shakes. Maybe they had a further discussion before that that I missed, or maybe this is what impact theory is deriving from that. But the claim on the video is protein shakes are killing your gains. We have the ability to measure gains by looking at lean mass and cross-sectional area. So what do the studies actually say when it comes to gains. It's very clear that supplementing with protein in no way kills your gains. There is not one single study that shows that people who supplement with protein get worse gains than people who don't. So right there, that statement is complete and utter trash. Now, what's funny is the studies actually tend to show the opposite effect. When you supplement with protein, you tend to get better results from resistance training because you are helping to jumpstart the recovery process in terms of muscle protein synthesis, as well as attenuating protein breakdown. If you wanna argue about like fasting from a, the perspective of longevity, which a lot of these people do, or regenerating your antioxidants. By the way, if you exercise, you're going to improve your antioxidant status regardless. I'm aware of no research, none, looking at fasting after a workout, showing it improves antioxidant status more than if you feed after a workout. That which can be asserted without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. Thank you, Christopher Hitchens. Am I saying that fasting after your workout is stupid? Am I saying that you need to have a protein shake immediately? As soon as you finish your last bicep curl, you must be drinking your... No, I'm not saying that. You don't even need to have protein shakes. I sell protein powder through Outwork Nutrition. We sell a whey protein isolate, very high quality, tastes great reasonable price. However, I will never tell you that you need protein powder. If you can get enough high quality protein from your normal diet, you don't need to supplement with it. However, it can be a great option for people who are really busy, who don't have time to cook, or who maybe have aversions to higher protein foods, or people who just don't have the appetite for that much protein. Because, you know, getting over like 150, 200 grams of protein a day for a lot of folks can be a lot of protein and difficult for them to get down. So for them, protein shakes can be a great option. They are not going to kill your gains. That is absolute nonsense. And to be quite honest, I am really getting very disappointed with impact theory for putting these folks on and making these claims and quite frankly, 
confusing the crap out of people. Now you know better, my advice is to do better. All right guys, tap the like button, subscribe to the channel, tell me how much of a meanie head I am and how wrong I am and that you've been fasting for three years and you're the most jacked person in the world. Go, catch you next week.